Genesis, the 29th chapter, starting with verse number 17. Leah was tender eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well favored. And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. And Laban said, It is better that I should that I give her to thee that I should give her to another man. Abide with me. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel. They seemed unto him but a few days for the love he had to her. And Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go in unto her. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast came to pass in the evening that he took Leah his daughter and brought her to him, and he went in unto her. And Laban gave unto his daughter Leah Zilpah his hand his maid for an handmaid. And it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Laban. And he said to Laban, What is this that thou hast done unto me? Did not I serve thee for Rachel? Wherefore then hast thou beguiled me? Laban said, It must not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Fulfill her week, and we will give thee this also for the service which thou shalt serve with me yet seven other years. And Jacob did so, and fulfilled her week, and he gave him Rachel his daughter to wife also. And Laban gave to Rachel his daughter Bilah his handmaid. To her maid. And he went in also unto Rachel, and he loved also Rachel more than Leah, and served with him yet seven other years. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. As you would all repeat after me, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all. 
good works. Amen. We thank God for you. We love you today. Um, it is truly a day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Uh, my name is Pastor X. O. Roby Jr. I'm the pastor at Third Baptist Church 582 East Ferry Avenue, Detroit, Michigan, 48202. Amen. I greet you with Jesus' joy today. and It is good to be in the house of the Lord just one more time. To our Third Baptist members, uh, we thank God for your support. We thank you for your obedience, even unto um, man and his ordinances that we should follow uh, this state in place. Amen. And we thank everyone on the outside that is looking in at us. We thank God for you. We love you. And once everything is said and done, we invite you to come and worship with us. We thank God for you and we love you. Um, we are in the process of just recording on a weekly basis. Um, if you would like to uh, receive some of our sermons that have gone forward before, uh, you can reach me at xorobi at yahoo.com and we will forge you uh, previous sermons that have been done. We can forge you via YouTube, or we can also send you a CD in the mail. We thank God for you, we love you. We are returning back to our normal course of study, which is the book of Genesis. We have been in Genesis for over uh, two and a half years, and we are here because this is where the Lord has led us, because how can you understand where you are at if you don't understand the beginning of everything? We thank God for you. We love you. We will move forward into our sermon. Nowadays, we have a genre of TV, and it is called um, reality TV. Um, it is called reality TV, and um, it has become the most popular form of TV entertainment, in my opinion. Amen. It's dealing with unscripted, real-life situations, and it often deals with regular people like you and me. And I will say this, that most uh, reality TV will be on for one or two years and it will go off, and there are some forms of reality TV that evolve and grow to a point where it is almost scripted after one or two years. And Reality TV is important because it helps us to realize that uh, people are the same as you and me, amen? They have the same issues, uh, they have the same um, situations, they have the same uh, type of dilemmas, they have the same type of love, they have the same type of families, uh, and in my opinion, all families have issues. Uh, this reality TV allows us to see um, that life for people is the same all the way around, amen? And I've learned a lot from reality TV, <clears throat> and the more I watch reality TV, which I don't watch that much of it, but occasionally I will channel in, and the more I see reality TV, the more I realize that it is giving us something that we need, amen? I say that because the more I read my Bible, the more I study, the more I learn about the families in the Bible, I realize that they are real people. I realize that they have real situations. I realize that they have real dilemmas. Uh, we started off uh, the book of beginnings in Genesis and we learned about uh, Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve had similar situations than we do, amen? Um, Adam and Eve, uh, when they had their sons, they had similar situations as parents, amen? And we can go beyond even Adam and Eve, and we can look at who we're dealing with, with uh, Abraham. Uh, we can look at Noah, we can look at Isaac, we can look at Jacob, and we see um, similar situations. Now, um, the context of the time may uh, be different, and the, 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 the tools or the things that... Um, innovation and, 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 and living has allowed, say for instance, we have cars now, and they didn't have cars back then, but they had animals, and they had all of these things, we talked about things last week, that are, 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 are present, that um, they, things may change, but yet and still the story is going to be 
very similar. Uh, when we look at Abraham, Abraham had issues, amen? Abraham had similar issues to the people that we see today. Abraham had um, some issues with, uh, with his sons, amen? And not only that, but Isaac, he had uh, issues with his boys. Remember, he had Esau and he had uh, Jacob. Esau um, did not like Jacob. They were actually in the womb fighting. Anybody have any family issues where you have brothers or you have sisters that are fighting and, and, and you see inner turmoil amongst the family? And, and I want to make sure that we realize that when we read our Bible, our Bible is about real people that had real issues just like we have real issues. We're real people. Um, and, and the eyes that it's seen through uh, may be different, but they're still real issues because if you were to look at um, Ishmael, and look at the issues that he had uh, with, with his brother, uh, you will look at it from the perspective of Ishmael, and it may be a completely different story because Ishmael was the firstborn. And even with uh, Esau, he was the firstborn. So you see two different sides if you really look into the story. Amen? Today we're going to deal, uh, and we're getting to a point where we're going to begin to deal with uh, Jacob and his issues that he dealt with. Amen? Now, if you thought that Abraham had issues dealing with uh, uh, with, with family, dealing with uh, older family members and younger family members and sons and, and, and so on. Look, you're getting ready to see a lot of things going on starting with Jacob. Now, i got to make this point because Jacob uh, received the blessing of his father over his brother Esau. Remember, Jacob received the birthright. And remember, Jacob received the double portion. And because of that, his brother Esau said, you know what? When I get a chance, I'm going to kill him. And we see those type of dy dynamics today, even today. If you were to watch TV, uh, just watch the news, and oftentimes you see the inner turmoil of family and brothers and sisters. So we've got to take the Bible and use it as it is, because all Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and it's proper for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and instruction, in the midst of the word of God, we can see ourselves, we can see the issues we go through, we can see all of the things that are going on, even right now in the word of God. And if you turn to the word of God, you will see where you can use what Abraham went through, what Isaac went through, what Jacob went through, to help you to make it through what you're going through. Amen? So today we're going to deal with the beginning of this relationship between Jacob and Rachel. And if I might, if I had to give a title to it, it would be called Love at First Sight. Amen? Um, if you were to go in and read the chapter 29 and just work your way all the way through, and even going back into chapter 28, you will see where Jacob's mother and father have told him, that we don't want you to take a daughter from the Canaanites or from, from the people of this land where we're at. We want you to return to uh, Padanaram where your mother's family is at and we want you to find a wife there. So he sojourns there and in the midst of headed there, he has a dream from the Lord. In the midst of having that dream, the Lord tells him, he says, Behold, the Lord stood above it. And said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land wherein thou liest, and to thee will I give it to thee and to thy seed. So the Lord is giving a vision to Jacob to let Jacob know, first of all, he's with him, to let him know that the promises that he has given to Abraham and to Isaac, it has fallen upon him, and he will multiply his seed. Amen. And we see where Jacob has come into the land of his mother's family. And he has run into some of the herders or some of the people tending to the sheep. And as he comes upon them, he sees Rachel from afar off. And when he first sees Rachel, he is enamored by her. He speaks to her and tells her, you know, I'm looking for my uncle. My mother is Rebecca, and she had a brother by the name of Laban. It's in the text right here. And it says, it came to pass when Laban heard the tidings of Jacob his sister's son, 
that he ran and met him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his house and he told Laban all these things. So the two have been introduced to one another and Laban is going to have a conversation with Jacob where he's like, look, you don't need to see anywhere else. You can stay here with me and because you're going to stay with me, you can work for me and because you're going to work for me, you can ask me for anything and I will give it to you. Verse number 16, and Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. Now, there are those that would read this text and see that Rachel was tender-eyed, and without properly going in and, 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 and dealing with these words, you would think that she had a lazy eye or or or, or she may have been cross-eyed or something like that, but the more I have studied, I'm beginning to understand that Leia was not a, did not have an, an, a, a droopy eye. Leia's eyes were just different in comparison to her sister Rachel. The text says it right there. So what we see is, is very likely Rachel had different color or, or, or eyes that were of a different color that allowed her to look more beautiful than her sister. And remember, it was Rachel that Jacob saw first. So there was love at first sight when he saw her. And in comparison to her sister, in comparison to the eyes, her eyes were, were very likely a different shade than her sister's or her sister's eyes were just normal. Amen? So beauty is in the eyes. Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. Now let me deal with a couple things because Leah, her name means wary. Amen? And, 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 and she uh, is going to be part of this whole blessing that God has spoken unto Jacob because in order for his seed to be multiplied, some things are going to have to happen that are even more uh, interesting. Even more reality driven than those things that had happened to Abraham and that had happened to Isaac. Amen? And, and it's right there. It says that, and Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. Now, this conversation is happening because Laban has asked Jacob, if you're going to work for me, ask me for anything. So they're introducing us to the two daughters. You have the one daughter, Leah, where she is not, and I'm not going to say she isn't attractive, and very likely her and Rachel are similar in ways that are undetectable by Jacob because of the things that are going to happen soon in the relationship. Amen? So it says, Leah, Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. So beauty was in the eyes, and Jacob was love-struck from King. Now, i got to make this point, because remember, all Scripture, we got to understand that uh, we like what we like. And I don't know about you, but there have been instances in my life where I was enamored by the beauty of a woman. Amen? Now, we have got to learn... And it looked me, it's a hard way to learn, but we learn through trial and error because sometimes those things that uh, may appear to be uh, the most beautiful thing or the best thing are not necessarily the best thing for you. Amen? So, beauty is in the eyes and we've got to learn to move beyond the beauty because you're going to see in the, in the dynamics of the relationship between Rachel, Leah, and Jacob that Leah was a good woman, amen? Not only that, but the favor of the Lord shone upon her because she was not loved as much as her sister. And she was the older, so it would paint a picture that uh, Laban and all that he is doing for the customs and uh, of his country, he is doing what is required of him as a father, amen? So when Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. So that is what he is asking his father-in-law for. He says, look, I'll work for you, but I want 
the hand of your younger daughter in marriage. Now remember, i got to paint this picture because there's some things that are going to happen. Um, Jacob, his name could be uh, referred to almost as a heel catcher. And his relationship with his brother Esau, he was able to beguile his brother to a point where he received the blessing of the older, even though he was the younger. And his name is going to show us that there's something tricky about him. Amen? Amen. <laughs> and Jacob loved Rachel. And he says, I will serve these seven years. And this word serve means to work for, for another to be a servant or to be subject unto another. So he is telling his father-in-law, look, I'll work for seven years for, for Rachel. I have no problem with that. Amen? And Jacob said to Laban, so, so verse number 18, 18, let's go to verse number 19. And Laban said, it is better that I should give her to thee than I should give her to another man abide with me. So what he's saying is I'd rather give her to my nephew than to give her to another man. Which in those days, that was, remember, what Jacob's mother and father told him, Isaac, remember, and, and, and Rebekah said, look, we don't want you marrying these women from the land we're at. We want you to go and to find you a word wife among my family or amongst your mother's family. Amen? And that is something that Isaac and Rebecca learned from Abraham. Amen? So verse number 18 then. Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel thy younger daughter. And Laban said, it is better that I give her to thee than I should give her to another man. And he tells him, look, stay with me. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel and they seemed unto him but a few days for the love he had for her. So it was love at first sight. He saw her, he was enamored with her. He said, look, I'll work seven years for her because she's beautiful. Uh, and the word favored in the text for a couple of verses up, it has to do with him seeing her. She was favored, she was fair-skinned, she was beautiful. Amen? And, and let me make this point. When you look at his father, Jacob's father, and his grandfather, Abraham, they too ran into issues because of the beauty of their wives. Amen? We've dealt with that before, and I just got to make that point. Uh, in those days, a beautiful woman in a foreign land, if she was married, very likely could add up to the husband being murdered. Amen? So we see where uh, the apple has not fallen far from the tree because we see where Jacob is uh, attracted to beautiful women. Amen? Let's keep going. Verse number 20. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed unto him but a few days for the love that he had for her. So he was enamored by her to a point where he's like, look, I worked seven years so she can be my wife. Now everything was decent and in order besides the fact that she was the younger sister and in that country, the older sister had to be married off before the younger sister. And the text would show us that it was all right for a man to have more than one wife. Amen? Verse number 21. And Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife. For my days are fulfilled that I may go in unto her. And what he's saying is, is I've worked my seven years, over seven years beyond, and because of that, I want my wife, and I want to be able to go in so me and my wife can have children together. Now I'll get this because this is where some trickery begins to happen. Verse number 22, And Laban be gathered together all the men of the place, and made a feast. And it came to pass in the evening, that he took Leah, his daughter, and brought her to him, and he went in unto her. Now, this is where I want to make the point that physically, I don't think there were many differences between these two sisters. Amen? Uh, 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 of course, they didn't have lights and tents. They may have had candles or whatever, but there were similarities enough where 
he could not notice the difference between her and her sister, or Rachel and Leah. He could not notice the difference, and because of that, he was able, he being Laban, was able to get over on him, which causes me to believe by studying and understanding that very likely the difference between the two sisters was the eyes. And in the text it said that she, I'm not going to make this up, I'm saying it. Leah was tender-eyed, very likely her eyes were of a normal color and Rachel's eyes were of a different color for that region, which is why he was not able to tell the difference between the two sisters. Amen. So the second point is, is there is a love of beauty, and not only is there the love of beauty, but the sisters were very similar in, in, in physical appearance to a point where he was unable to tell the difference. Well, how does that apply to us today, Pastor Romy? Um, We have these preconceived ideas of what beauty is. And, and if I could, I would like to bring in uh, something that, that makes, that I, I was watching the color purple the other day. And um, Seely, if you look at her from a, 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 a visual perspective, and by the way, uh, Mr. treated her, our treated her, you would think that she wasn't a good wife, but she was a good wife. She was a very good wife, and she was exactly what Albert needed, but his goal was to always chase after another woman, after Celie or after her sister, and if he had just focused on her, imagine how much better his life would have been. Now, of course, this is the book, The Color Purple, that was made into a movie, but we can learn a lot from the mistakes that he made because if he would have treated her well like he should have as a wife, he would have been blessed because everything she touched was blessed. Amen? So in the same respect, we look at Leah and we look at Rachel. If Jacob could have gotten beyond the beauty of Rachel to truly see the blessing that Leah was because when you go in and you read, you'll see where she was able to have sons. Sons. And not only that, she was able to give him something that his sister was not able to give him, but it was all tied to the plan of God because God had promised him that I am going to multiply your seed, and in the midst of God multiplying the seed, we will see where it's almost as if God has a sense of humor. Amen? Let's keep going. So, and Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve these seven years for Rachel. And Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go in unto her. Verse number 22. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. And it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah's daughter and brought her to him. And he went in unto her. And Laban gave unto his daughter Leah Zilpha, his maid, for an handmaid. Now, this is where I'm talking about this sense of humor with God, because these handmaids that are going to be going to be given to the daughters, they are going to help Jacob to become a father of many sons and daughters. And it is in the working of God to go in and tie in his promise that he has given to Jacob and the circumstances, however they may look to us today, were normal for the time at hand. Now, what does that say? That says that there are dynamics that go on right now, even in life, that may not look right to people on the outside looking in, but God does not make any mistakes. Amen? We are quick to judge others, mothers that have children, out of wedlock. Look, God knew that child would be born. And before we, look, God knew. So who are we to judge how that child came about? Now, the relationship that brought that child about, whether it be from whatever type of relationship, 
That is between the, the man and the woman that have come together. That's between them and God and not between us and them. There are people that were born out of wedlock where God has been able to bless us beyond measure by that. We need to stay focused on the blessing and quit condemning people because of mistakes that have, they have made because it is all tied to the will of God. Thank you, church. Amen. So, uh, beauty's in the eyes and there is a love of beauty. Let's keep going. We're in verse number 24. And Laban gave unto his daughter Leah, Zilpha, his maid for an handmaid. And it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah, and he said to Laban, What is this that thou hast done unto me? Did I not serve thee for Rachel? Wherefore then hast thou beguiled me? Now look at the answer, because the answer says a lot. And Laban said, It must not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Now, he deceived him, that word beguiled. And remember, this was all in the plan of God. Amen? Not only was it in the plan of God, but we're going to see the dynamics where Jacob did not truly understand God's plan as he should be. But he is going to be blessed by God's plan. He, not only he, but us also, be blessed by God. Because remember, this is where we get the 12, the 12 tribes from. Amen? And we've got to understand that even in the midst of beauty, there can be deception in the midst of it. Amen? And it came to pass in that morning, behold, it was laid, and he said unto Laban, What is this that thou hast done unto me? Did I not serve with thee for Rachel? Now, remember earlier in the text, we saw where he said it is nothing to serve for seven years for Rachel. Now, without being deceived, would he have served for Leah also for seven years? Would he have? So the events have occurred the way they were supposed to occur because without having Leah, he would not be able to have as many sons as he had. So, whereas he feels that he's being deceived, he's being tricked, he's being misled in the midst of God's plan, it is going to be a blessing to him, not only him, but to us also. That being said, I need you to understand that there are some things going on in your life right now, and it may seem treacherous to you. It may seem where you're being deceived, you're being misled, you're being tricked, but just be patient with the process because all things will work together for the good for whom the Lord has called according to his purpose. Whatever God has planned for you, you've got to go through some same things that may not seem fair, but it will all work out for your good. Well, did this work out for Jacob's good? Yes, it did. Let's keep going. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. So it says, it came to pass in the morning. Behold, it was Laban. He said to Laban, what is this that thou hast done to me? Did I not serve thee for Rachel? Wherefore, then thou hast beguiled me, or thou hast tricked me, or thou hast misled me. And remember the word, the title was beauty is beguiled. Uh, and the first point was beauty in the eyes. The point after that was the love of beauty and then beauty beguiled. But this beauty, beautiful, the way we look at things, can seem misleading even when the beginning it may have appeared to be the most pleasant thing that I've looked upon but it is going to work out for our good. Amen? It may, may not seem fair right now because if you look at Jacob you're like, man, I've been served for seven years to get my wife and you my uncle you my family and you are tricking me. Now remember what Jacob's name means because this is going to come back to uh, to get him over on his uncle because his uncle started the trickery first. But it was all in God's plan. Amen. Let's keep going. And it came to pass that in the morning and he had Rachel and he said, why are you doing this to me? You tricked me. And then 
Laban comes in and said, it must be so. That done in our country, I got to give the younger to be the, to, before I give the, um, I got to give the older before I give the, uh, the younger. So in order, verse 27, he said, fulfill her we, and we will give thee also for the service which thou shalt serve me yet seven other years. Now, remember, I made the point. He served for seven years for Rachel. Now he's going to end up serving 14 years for Rachel, but he didn't have a problem in doing it. And in the midst of it, he already had a wife. And when you read further down in the text, as we will next week, you will see that she immediately started having children for him, which was a blessing to him. You remember Abraham, we couldn't have no kids with Sarah. You remember that? And as soon as she gave him her maid, and he had a son, Ishmael, look, that, that made his day right there. He had his son. He loved Ishmael. But that is not the son whom the promise was through. It was through Isaac. Let's keep going. I'm almost done. Verse number 26. And Laban said, it must be done in, the country, in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. And Laban gave to Rachel his daughter Billa, his handmaid, and he made it. So we see where he has served all these next seven years, and Laban gave her, uh, verse number 28, and Jacob did so, and fulfilled her week, and gave him also Rachel, his daughter, to wife also. Amen? Now, it was love at first sight, and he fulfilled the 14 years that he had to work in order to be able to wife Rachel. In the city, he was still married to the older sister, Leah. And in the midst of it, not only did he get Rachel, not only was he married to Leah, but he also had the two handmaids that would become a part of this inner turmoil between the two sisters because you had Zilpha and you had Bill. Amen? And this was all tied to his mom and his dad saying, look, we want you to go to your mother's country and find you a wife. The custom was where the man was able to have more than one wife for that country. It was fine. It was okay. Not only that, but you're going to see some other workings in the midst of it where he's going to have children with Zilpah and with Bella, and because of that, his seed is going to be multiplied. And when you go in and you start studying and reading and learning, you will see that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is coming through these tribes that are being born through the obedience of Jacob. And it was all about love at first sight. But I'm here to tell you about a love that's even greater than that. At first sight. The Lord loved you before you were born. He loved you to a point where he sent his son Jesus to die on Calvary for you. And it can be challenging for people to, to really understand Jesus Christ. And Jesus even as a child. But realize that Jesus, his life was scripted just like all of ours. And he was as human as you and me. But there was a difference. He was perfect. He was able to go through life in all of these dilemmas, all of these uh, uh, misleadings, all of these things where people try to get over on him. And even unto death, he asked his father to forgive him. So I'm asking you right now that you would accept this perfect man that God has sent for all of us. He was normal like you and me. He went through the same challenges like you and me. He was born of a woman like you and me. And he died on an old rugged Roman cross for your sins and for my sins. And the difference is, is that his perfection allowed him to be raised from the dead on the third day morning. And because of that, if you can accept that he lived on this earth, he lived us on, on this earth perfectly. He was born of a woman. That he lived this life in a way that none of us ever have and none of us ever will be. To a point where God was able to raise him from the dead. 
And he is able to save you from your sins. We're all going to have issues. We're all going to have troubles. We're all going to have sins. There's none of us. There's none righteous save Jesus Christ. Amen? If you accept him as your personal Savior, and you accept that he is at the right hand of God, that he was raised from the dead, and he can save you from your sins, you can be saved. So regardless of what you go through, all these things that are going on right now that you dealt with in your life, if you can accept what Jesus Christ offers to you, that eternal life, you shall be saved and you will spend eternity with God. Look, we're all normal. We all have issues. We're no different than Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, David. We're no different. We all need a Savior. We all need a Savior. His name is Jesus. Let us pray. Our Father, our God, Lord, we thank you, Lord, we love you. We thank you for your word, Father. We ask that this word, Lord, might be uh, as it is intended. Uh, it might be uh, correction, instruction. It might be truth thereof. It might be everything that we need in order to live our lives the way and the way you would have us to live. Lord. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for uh, even where we're at right now, Father. Because we know that all things will work out for our good, Lord. And Lord, when we breathe our last breath and we cry our last cry, Father, we pray that we would have all accepted your son, Jesus. It's because of him, Lord, that we are saved. We thank God for you. We love you. This is uh, my prayer to you. We love you. Um, 582 East Ferry Avenue. And we thank God for you. Amen. Amen. <laughs>